Hey, how's everybody doing today? So I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. First, let me step back a second here and give a special thanks to my sponsor, Fox Dream Managed Solutions. Great multiplayer servers, strictly focusing on DCS. If you're looking for something, they have the right price, great servers, check them out. All right, so as I was saying, we're gonna do something different today. I was watching a video the other day from Striker TV. Nice guy, we did some emails back and forth. I asked him some questions about what I'm gonna do here because he was showing how he did his setup. And basically it's what I guess they would call the um, MFSSB setup, whatever the, uh, the vibration. These right here are Dayton Audio Transduce is 50 watts and I pretty much followed his link and I picked up the same stuff that he recommended as far as a little uh, little amp here I guess that's what it is some wire very easy job it's powered right here has a USB that goes into I guess that USB goes right probably into the computer power in the front you stick your wires in there and basically mount it to the bottom of the seat so we're gonna do a step-by-step -step on all of that I'm not gonna do the whole video where I do every nut and bolt pulling off, but where I at least take a step back and uh, film sections of it. As far as everything else goes, I have been really, really enjoying this setup. Um, I've been using for a microphone, I've been using the mod mic over there. Got my Vario VR headset. Um, obviously, I'm all into the wind wing stuff. I had a Thrustmaster F16, uh, yeah, the F16 throttle, and it just didn't work out. I got a PTO2 over there. I've got the wing wing displays, the F18 in the back. When I want to use the 16, or the, when I want to use the 18, rather, I'm really stuck on the 16. I, I love that jet. All I got to do with this is just flip it up. It skims right past the television, doesn't touch it, and I'm all set up for the 18. I want to go back to the 16. Up and over. That actually setup comes with the little, uh, I guess, what do they call this? The little display, whatever, you know, button thing. Forgot the name of it, drawing a blink right now. As far as the F18 joystick and the F16, this is another one. The 18 is full movement. The 16 is their version. It, it does also have a little bit of feedback in it. This one, because it's so much harder to move, that one I bolted right down to the mount. The 18, that's on by magnets. And the same goes for the throttles, both of them. If I wanna swap back and forth, it's an easy change. I can just pick it right up, bingo, and it's done. It doesn't slide or move at all. It doesn't slide or move at all when I'm using it. it. It's mounted on there really good. I actually usually use a screwdriver to pop it up and move it off. So I'm glad I just didn't break a button. <laughs> Other than that, it, 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 I'm using the next level cockpit. This isn't the F-18 style. I guess this is kind of like in the middle. They make three of them. There's the green one, the black version, and there's another version I think that they make. And actually they make a, a number of different types of cockpits. So as far as I was saying, all wind wing. I'm just using a basic old Cooler Master mouse, cheapo keyboard. And down underneath, we're using the Skywalker. Actually, they're the wind wing rudder pedals. I really, really like them. I actually like them a lot better than the Thrustmaster ones. Don't ask me why. I mean, well, I was having a little bit of a problem with the Thrustmaster ones, but we're not going to get into that whole detail. They were working good. I just wasn't getting full movement. For some reason, I couldn't get 100%. I was getting 100% on the left. I think it was the left. And I was getting like 95, 97. I tried everything. I finally got fed up with it because every time I'd go down the runway, the, the plane was just pulling. It was pulling to the left all the time, and it was really kind of a pain in the neck, especially I put the brakes on, and off it went. So that wasn't working out for me. I read online that there's a few other issues like that, uh, well, a few other people having issues with the same exact thing. So I went to the wind wing, and I'm not at all disappointed. All of my wind wing stuff I really like. I have been kind of watching online. I, well, I've been looking online at the um, real simulator. I guess the guy's over in Europe somewhere. He makes a F-16 force-sensored, Basically, it, it, it's all computerized, joystick base, and he makes the grip. His is also made to fit the Thrustmaster F16 R18 grip, but I've had my dealing with Thrustmaster. The problem with that, that I found on components that are heavier 
than the Thrustmaster joystick bases. You can see the difference in here how thick this is and it has little allen keys that lock it into place. With the Thrustmaster it screws down and the problem I kept getting was the shaft that went up inside from forcing it back and forth, it would start to get a little jiggle. I had to open the thing up, go in, tighten, and it's got very small screws. Now, if they reinforced that with something heavier, they'd be golden. But anyways, quick rundown on how things are going with this. I love it. Since I've gone VR, I've never gone back to anything else. When I do start getting into doing videos of the game, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it over VR or go back to doing it on the monitor. Actually, videoing from the monitor type, you, you get a better frame rate than you do with VR. VR uses a lot of frames compared. So, last thing I'm enjoying is them little VR ears. They're off the ear, um, off the ear headset. They mount right onto the Vario VR headset and it's great, work out great. I, I don't like my ears covered in VR. Regular gaming, I had no problem in VR. You can't see nothing. I kind of like to hear what's going on around me. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this shot here and the next step, you'll see it when the seat's off. We'll be back. Okay, so here we are. That took like a whole five minutes to take out them four bolts. So what I decided to do just to be on the safe side is I checked all the screws going into the bottom of the seat to make sure everything was nice and solid. And I think I, I used the Loctite with this, just a little dab of it so they didn't seem to be loose at all. That was not a problem. And uh, my only concern was the mechanism for moving the seat, the way this sets up here. But it seems that I can probably go... I want to put the wires facing the back of the seat, not the front. And it looks like that'll work out fine. And it'll, ha it'll have a, enough clearance that it won't get in the way of the, um, the slider. So I'm going to drill four holes and get these mounted. I have some flathead screws. I'm going to go through the top and I'm going to use hot glue to make sure that the material doesn't fray. I'll just put a dab on there, run it around. I could also, somebody had mentioned using like a super glue, but I don't know if anybody's ever tried using that stuff on material, but it kind of can cause like when it's wet, a reaction and things can get hot and catch on fire. So we're gonna stay away from that. Um, fortunately, everything's on the inside where the sliders go, well, except for this part of the bar. So that'll be far enough away where nothing's gonna interfere. This looks like it's gonna work out great. I know Striker was asking me to get back to him. So I am gonna let him know how this works out when it gets all set up. Oh, uh, we got some, uh, oh, we can do a peel here. Fancy, look at that. I don't know why they even bothered with that, but they did. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get these mounted. We'll check back when I get all the holes lined up and um, drilled out. And we'll look at how I mount it through. And hopefully this helps somebody, like, um, like he helped me. So we'll be back. So here we are, one's mounted. Pleasant surprise. I got to give it to next level, man. I didn't realize it, and I, I would have guessed, like, 100% that the bottom of this seat was plywood, like probably almost every other one is, but it's probably like a 16th of um, sheet metal. Maybe a little thicker, because it's pretty strong. Well, actually it's got, it's all bent around, which would reinforce it, giving it the ridges. But, wow, that, that's really, I'm really happy about that. So the screws lined up perfect, they went right through. It's a 50 watt, I don't know what the, you know, the, the vibration is 50 watts. And I think it's, I don't know a lot about the um, design of electronics as far as amps and, you know, all that stuff. But these were recommended and they're supposedly one of the, one of the best out there. And basically, instead of screwing on, I noticed in the video that the ones I was looking at screwed and put the wire through, these are kind of a push clamp, a push thing. So you put the wire through the hole and it's done. I could have gotten plugs to go in it, but it doesn't really seem too many people bother going that route. So yeah, these holes back here are for the, what do they call that, that butt kicker? I think there's a clamp that, uh, a bracket that goes back there. I've got it somewhere around here. Um, I've seen how they were used and it's kind of a totally different, a different design than what this does. So I never really, a lot of people use it for racing and whatnot, but I think for the flight simming, 
from what, a, from what I was told that this would be the better option. So we're going to give it a chance. We're going to give it a shot, and we'll know in a little while when I get the rest of it mounted. Or uh, we'll be... Okay, so it doesn't get any, any more straightforward than what we have here. You strip your wires down. Amazon, for a really, really great price, you can get some nice little wire clippers and strippers. Strippers and clippers. Push it in. Red to red. Black to black. This will go on the side of the cockpit. I'm going to keep the volume all the way down for now. I have a small power supply that goes with this. It's basically like anything you get with a monitor or whatever. It has the little box plugs into the wall. A little 3.5 into there. I'm not quite sure what the auxiliary does. I can almost guarantee. I'm not 100%, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that if you take this green and go into the speaker, you will get just straight up like bass speaker. This is the one right here, the USB-C. It's a small white cable, mini, I'm sorry. It's a regular USB 2.0 to a mini USB in here. I'm very surprised they didn't go with the C. They probably just have a lot of stock and haven't gone through that yet. Be sure to power it off. You don't want to plug it in and all of a sudden the thing comes in all blasting your ears out. So it's ready to go on. I'm going to mount the chair and we're going to be off and running. And we'll be back to wrap this video up when I get to sit down on it and get a little vibration. That sounded weird. <laughs> wow, okay. That is very cool. I took some double-sided tape. You can see where the white USB cable's going into the little receiver, I guess it's called. I think it's, I don't know, it's really a receiver, but yeah, I guess that's what it does. Anyways... Yeah, <laughs> very cool. I mean, it, it, you feel everything. You feel. I, I'm really happy with this. This is much better than the pad, um, and it's a lot more comfortable. And believe me, these ain't the most comfortable seats in the world. They're not built for comfort. <laughs> these these uh, jet seats, uh, jet styled seats. It's not like my my razor seat over there, that thing I could sit on for 12 hours and have no problem. But what if you want to do add-ons, like where you can narrow down the landing gear, the flaps, uh, the speed brakes or air brakes, if you want to call them, I call them speed brakes. Um, if, if you want to feel G's, uh, the, um, the cockpit glass going up, the canopy rather, it, it, you, you can, you can narrow everything down. So, yeah, very happy. Very happy. So, t you know, today's Saturday. Tomorrow will be Sunday. I'll edit this up, get it out there. Once again, I'm very happy that I ran across the video from Striker, Striker TV. i got to give him a thumbs up. I'm going to, he's been waiting for me to get back to him and let him know how this all worked out. And yeah, so my channel... I have Fox 3 Managed Solutions Server. It's a 16-player server, and it's called DFA, Delta Foxtrot Alpha um, Server. And I just mostly use it for training missions and stuff. And then I hit the other servers. You know, it's a small server. I have fun, fun with it. And um, Fox 3 Managed Solutions, they're, they're really awesome. You know, Joe's a great guy. He's always there to help you. And... You know, can't beat it. Fox 3, thank you for taking care of me there. And we'll get back. We will get back and the uh, video will be up soon. I'm going to go do a little bit of jamming and start testing things out. Take care, everybody. Peace.